All right, Shalom, Israel. This is Brother Paul. Um, let's get into this hopefully brief but very important Bible study, breaking down who are the Gentiles that Jesus went to and that he sent the apostles uh, to. Who are these Gentiles? We're going to go from old to new uh, testaments, and we're going to we're going to understand this. It's important we understand it because there's a lot of confusion. And I, I believe that the Most High, he didn't want the confusion, but the Lord said that his word causes separation, right? Those that are on the Lord's side, those that are not. Okay, so there's many mysteries in the Bible. Uh, praise the Lord, Sister Gala. Uh, there's many mysteries in the Bible all of which are not revealed to everybody because everybody does not receive the truth with love. Okay. Everybody doesn't love the truth. Many people that say that they love the truth of God's word, they're lying because when they read this Bible, they twist it and they say, that's not what God meant. And you be trying to show them because the Lord gave you the understanding and they calling you crazy and all this. So we have to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, right? Now, we're going to start this in Exodus chapter 24, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to walk you through it as fast as possible, but I'm going to, I hope that you can take notes um, if, you, if you're not familiar with this, if you don't know this for yourself. Um, I'm going to walk you through and show you how, how, did these, how did these Israelites become known as Gentiles when, once you get to the New Testament? But we're going to look at history as well. Um, I'm not going to show you no videos, but I'm going to reference some things to you so you can go study for yourself. Um, because you have to know history as well. Okay, world history. What are people? Now, Exodus 24. Sisters, please cover your heads and brothers, uncover your heads. Exodus 24. And we're going to start this at verse 3. Okay. Exodus 24 and verse 3. Now, this is at Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. Our ancestors were getting married to the Most High at Mount Sinai. Okay. And it says this. And Moses came and told the people, all 12 tribes of Israel, and there were strangers with us. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm teach you as we go on that the strangers, God never made a covenant directly with the strangers. Okay. He only made a covenant with us, with Israel and Judah. Okay. Now, the strangers can be a part of that. So this is why when you understand that, once you get to the New Testament, it'll make sense. Hopefully, it'll make sense to you that, wait a minute, if the Apostle Paul is telling these strangers, if these are really strangers, if he's talking about reconciliation, right? Now, you can spiritualize it, right? But that's not really what he was saying. When they say things like, well, this is this is because of sin, you know, no. When Paul was telling the, these Gentiles in Corinth and Greece, God gave us the ministry of reconciliation unto you. That's I'm going to show you why he said that. OK, it's, it has nothing to do with the stranger. The stranger can always have access because God never made a covenant with them. He never married them. They're not his people. We are his people. We married God. OK, that's why he said, I'm going to get you every time you disobey me. I'm going to get you. He's going to deal with the nations later, but he get us quick. OK, uh, hold on. Uh, brother, um, Meshiach, that's Aiden's. Let Nirvana have some too. Um, it's sweet tea. Um, brother Meshiach, uh, you said how you read in the Bible, what's process and procedures are. So. Right now we going through we going we starting in Exodus, brother, and we're gonna go all the way through the New Testament. We're not gonna get every verse because it take too much time tonight. But I'm gonna hit certain scriptures to to prove without a shadow of a doubt that the, by the time you get to the New Testament, you perhaps the Lord may grant you understanding to see the Gentiles in the New Testament are not strangers. They're not white people, okay? And the white people are not the only strangers in the world anyway. So that's that's another reason why that's false doctrine. Talking about the strangers is the people in the New Testament. No, the 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 Gentiles in the New Testament is Israel is the northern kingdom of our people. And I'm approved that 
Now, let's we start in Exodus 24, uh, brother, um, and verse uh, three. OK, now our people is at Mount Sinai, just came out of Egypt, right? All 12 tribes, strangers with them, some Egyptians. OK, uh, it says, and Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord have said, will we do? OK, now, when a man and woman stand before the altar and they make their vows, right? The man go first, then the woman. I do. I do. Bam. That's it. You may kiss the bride, right? That's how man do it. Now, let's skip down. Let's skip down to verse five. OK, because Moses rose up and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars. Now, if you go to Saudi Arabia, it's still there to this day. I ain't lying. The Lord is my witness. It's still there. Uh, they have a fake Mount Sinai, okay, that they allow tourists to come to. Because if you if you understood, I ain't going to digress, but if you if you know what I'm talking about, you you you, you with me on that. Okay, verse five, uh, it says, and he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took, now this is the blood of the virgin, right? When a man take a wife and she's a virgin, you see, then the blood is spilled, right, of her virginity, okay? And that blood is a, is a witness, you understand, to, to prove that she's a virgin, okay? Now, this is what happened when we got married to the Most High. Uh, one second. Brother Mashiach, he said, how do you go about navigating the way around the Bible in terms of how you meant to read the scriptures the correct and one proper way? We go, like Isaiah said in 8 and 20, to the law and the testimony, now, the law and the testimony is in the scriptures, too. OK, but the testimony is also what we call the New Testament starting in. Technically, it starts in the book of Acts, brother, um, because the New Testament kicked off when Jesus uh, was resurrected. OK, when he died and, and, re and was raised. But the, what the world say the New Testament is, it starts in Matthew. But nevertheless, and we're not fully into the New Testament, neither. We're transitioning slowly, brothers and sisters. And I'm going to show you that. But uh, Exodus 24 and verse 5. And he sent young men uh, of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord have said, will we do and be obedient? That's twice. Right. Let's keep going. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. OK, bam, they married. OK, our ancestors got married to God at Mount Sinai. Right. Case closed on that. Now, let's go. Now, we not we, we're going to skip past when they built the, the golden calf and they, they drew it on the rock. And it's still there in the land of Saudi and Arabia in that province. Okay. If you research, you'll see that. Um, we're going to skip that be, just for the sake of time, but we know they built the golden calf. They worshiped it. Okay. Now we're going to see as they're about to enter into the promised land. Remember they, the Lord sent the 12 spies, go check out the land of Canaan. They came back with the evil report minus Joshua and Caleb. The Lord said, look, y'all going to get a, a year for every day you was gone. They was gone 40 days, 40 nights. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a year for each day. 40 years they wandered in a big circle. OK, and then they went to the promised land. But before they went to the promised land, right before they went, right when Moses was about to die, this is what the Lord had to say. Let's let's go to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy 32. And I'm going to show you, brothers and sisters, that when you when you um when you read and through this you have to we have to always be humble okay because god said in proverbs that i will pour my spirit out unto you i will make known my words unto you meaning you nobody on earth not even the the wicked angels can sit down and read this bible and understand it without god allowing you to understand something OK, it's not possible. OK, I'm talking about the deep stuff. OK, this mystery of the Gentiles in the New Testament is a very, very deep mystery. OK, that's why so many people are bamboozled 
by what Paul was saying. They don't understand what Paul was talking about. At one point, brothers and sisters, I didn't understand neither. Okay, I thought I knew, but I didn't. Okay, and the Lord showed me that. That's why I'm stressing to you, be humble if you want this understanding. Okay, Deuteronomy 32. Now I'm going to show you the Lord is prophesying about the split of the kingdom. Okay, which happened many, many, many centuries later. Okay, the split of the kingdom of Israel. Two nations, no more one family. Okay, until Messiah come. And it's a master plan behind it. I'm going to show you that, how deep it go. Okay, look. Deuteronomy 32 and let's pick it up at verse 15. But Jeshuron waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him. Okay. Now, who's Jeshuron? Jeshuron, some people say it's the 12 tribes. Maybe there's some people that say it's the northern kingdom. We're going to find out. Forsook God, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger okay now let's skip down to let's skip down to verse uh verse 20 and we're gonna hit 21 and then that's it okay look and he said i will hide nirvana turn that light off and close my door close the door this door Close the door. Close the door. Okay, it says, uh, and he said, verse, tw uh, verse 20, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. 21, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Now, now watch this. Okay. Um, brother, uh, Meshiach. We'll, we'll have to hit on that later, brother. Right now we're dealing with the mystery of the Gentiles. So I'll deal with that at another time. And I got videos dealing with that already. So you can go check those out. Um, 21, the middle of 21. We in Deuteronomy 32. It says, uh, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Now, brothers and sisters, you may be thinking when the Lord said that, that he's talking about some Europeans because he's it seemed like he's talking about all 12 tribes of Israel. But he is not. When he said what he said in verse 21, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 21, the Lord is talking about Judah. OK, he's talking about how Judah pissed him off. By worshiping false gods. And the Lord said, I'm going to provoke them to jealousy with a foolish nation. Catch the catch how the Lord is saying it. A foolish nation. What is nation? Nation is people. Right. He said, I'm going to provoke them to jealousy. I'm going to move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, not a people. OK, when since when did Japheth become disoriented and was never a people? OK. We have to understand, we have to humble ourselves first of all, but then we have to understand what is the Lord really saying? He's talking about Judah, how Judah provoked him to anger. Then he say, okay, I got something for you, Judah. Since you want to do that to me, take this. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to break it all down. I'm going to show you that he's talking about provoking them to jealousy with the Northern kingdom Israelites. Okay. Our own flesh and blood. Now let's go to uh, Deuteronomy um, we'll go to Deuteronomy 24. Okay. And this is, I'm still building the foundation before we get to the meat. Deuteronomy 24 and verse one. Now, like I said, brothers and sisters, if you're not familiar with this, please take notes for your own sake, for your own benefit. Okay. That way you don't be confused about this and meditate on it. Take your time, you know, take your time, prove all things. The book say. Prove that it's false if you believe that it's false. Don't just say that it's false because you heard some preacher say it's not the truth. You prove it for yourself. That's the only way you're going to know. Okay. 
Um, Brother Mashiach, you said, is the book not written for Israel by Israel on Israel? Look, the strangers can get salvation too, brother. Salvation is not just for us, okay? Our job right now is to go preach this word of Jesus to our lost brothers and sisters. During the, during the millennium, during the thousand year reign of Jesus and the saints on the earth, that's when the strangers going to receive the word, okay? That's when they're going to be trying to hear the gospel. Right now, they don't care, okay? Now, the 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 individual strangers that want to serve our God with us, they're more than welcome to join themselves unto us even now, okay? But the focus right now, and I'm going to show you that too. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm going to show you that in, even in the testimony when Jesus said, go into all nations and preach the gospel, he was not at all telling us as the children of Israel, when you see Israel, skip over your own people and go to the strangers. That is not what he was saying, okay? Even the Sunday church testifies of that because when the Sunday church set up shop, where do where are they located? Do they go to the suburbs where the Europeans is at or do they go to the hood where Israel is at? OK, so it's, it's spiritually ingrained in us. Go to Israel, go to my sheep. OK, and preach this gospel. But of course, many of our people are liars. OK, children in whom is is no faith. They don't believe the most high. But I'm not trying to digress. Deuteronomy 24. I'm proving to you right now, brothers and sisters, that the first of all, in Deuteronomy 32, verse 21, the Lord was talking about how Judah provoked him to anger with their false gods and how he was going to move them to jealousy with a people which were not a people and a foolish nation. OK, I'm I'm proving to you he wasn't talking about all 12 tribes pissed me off. So I'm a I'm a grafting some strangers to piss off my people. That's not what he was saying. I'm going to prove that to you. OK, uh, brother Mashiach, that's right. The book, of, the books of Acts explain salvation is for everyone. Is that right? Yes, it is. But even in the Old Testament, brother, the law testifies that salvation is for all people. The Lord says in the stranger that sojourns among you. Right. It shall be one law to you and to him. OK, so that's that's not what's in question. OK, people make it seem like if you if you're saying what the Bible is saying, that you're preaching hatred or prejudice and you're not. You're not. I never. Me personally, I, never, I can't speak for other brothers that teach this. I'm not saying that the strangers can't get salvation. What I'm saying is this whole Bible is, is about us and the strangers. They they are they are allowed to get salvation just like we are allowed to get salvation through Jesus Christ, through having faith in him. But that don't mean that if if I got this word and I'm on the streets and I'm preaching to to sinners that don't know the most high. If, and I come across an Israelite that don't know the Lord and a, and a stranger that don't know the Lord, whether they white or black or whatever. Right. Indian don't matter. I'm not supposed to skip over my own people and go to the stranger. I'm going to prove that to you. That's not what the Bible teaches us to do, because we are the elect of God. We are his chosen people. We are his bride. God is when he sent his only son. See, that's why I say this is a Bible study, brothers and sisters. We're going we're going to go real deep into into this okay uh verse uh, uh brother sean you said where's that scripture found brother about the laws for us and the strangers look at uh i believe it's exodus 12 okay exodus 12 uh brother mashiach you said but does not law say israel can't marry strangers the the lord don't want us to marry certain strangers the canaanite people for example right the seven nations that the lord was trying to drive out by sending us to the land to kill them the Lord ain't want us mixing with them because of their pagan ways. Their sin cup was filled. The Lord don't want his saints to be unequally yoked. OK, so that's really all it boils down to. It has nothing to do with color, nothing to do with color, brothers and sisters, because the seven hermetic nations, the Lord ain't want us mixing with. They was all black, just like we black, so-called. OK, so it's not about color. It's about their gods that they worship. So it's not a sin if a Israelite brother want to marry a stranger. It's not a sin if a Hebrew sister want to marry a stranger. The problem is when they, if their heart ain't right, number one, and if they mix them with people that don't want to serve the most high, that's the problem. Now, me personally, if you was to ask me, brothers and sisters, I'm saying Israel, marry Israel. Don't be marrying these strangers, man. But that's my personal opinion. But we're not here for that right now. 
Uh, Brother Mashiach, you said, are we allowed to marry strangers if strangers tell given to salvation? Yes, you can marry a stranger as long as they trying to serve God with you. OK, again, if you ask me, Israel, we just need to marry Israel. Stop running after these strangers. OK, that's been our biggest downfall. OK, for a long time. Deuteronomy 24, though, verse one. Now, this is the foundation, brothers and sisters. Foundation. So you can understand. When a man have taken a wife and married her and and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he have found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement. Check one and give it in her hand. Check two and send her out of his house. Also check two. And when she's departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, meaning her first husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Okay, now. The Bible do say that, brother uh, Mashiach, that the Lord hates Esau. However, that don't mean the whole nation of Edomites, because you got some black Edomites that's in the, the land of Ham, that's in Africa, and they they is not wicked. They not doing evil to Jacob over there. OK, so it's not the whole race of of Edomites that the Lord hates. It's the certain family groups. OK. And the Lord going to judge. He's a righteous judge. So he going he going to deal with them. But there will be Edomites in the kingdom. OK, the Lord tell us don't hate Esau. He said, don't hate the Egyptian neither. OK, but let's try to stay on topic. All right. Now. Pay attention to Deuteronomy 24, one through four. OK, keep that in the forefront of your mind as we go along, because it's going to make sense as we go. All right. That's the foundation. OK. Now, I showed you already for those just joining, I showed you in Exodus that the 12 tribes of Israel got married to God at Mount Sinai. Blood was spilled. We came into the covenant. We his wife. OK, strangers were with us. Black strangers. See, when you talk about strangers, stop just thinking about white people because they're not the only strangers in the world. OK, there's other Shemitic nations. There's other Hermetic nations. And of course, you have the seed of Japheth. OK, but all the nations outside of us, the 12 tribes of Israel is considered Gentiles or strangers. OK, all of them. Now. I also showed you in Deuteronomy 32, the Lord said Ju he didn't mention the names. He didn't say Judah and Israel. He said he was talking about his people, but the Lord talked in a certain way, brothers and sisters. And unless we humble ourselves, we're not going to understand. OK, we got to seek his face diligently. And pay attention, pray, seek his face. He'll give you the understanding. Now, Deuteronomy 32, he says, they provoked me to anger, to jealousy with a people that's, I mean, with, a, with gods that are no gods. I'm going to move them to jealousy with a people which are not a people, right? With a foolish nation. I'm going to show you who he was talking about. Now, keep in mind Deuteronomy 24. Okay, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings 11. I'm going to run it down for you so you, you know, because there's a lot of people saying, no, that's not what it means. And OK. See, the problem with our people is so many of us are puffed up, you see, where we don't want to sit down and reason with each other. You understand? There's no there's no love. What did what did the master say? Because iniquity shall, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right. What is love? According to God, when we keep his commandments, that's how you know you love the children of God. Who's the children of God? The 12 tribes of Israel. OK, so love, man, we lacking on the love part. But nevertheless, the sheep, we 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 striving, we getting better. OK, the goats, they're going to go in and get wicked, more wicked. Anyway, OK, first Kings 11, brothers and sisters, first Kings 11. OK, now uh, let me see. Let's look at verse nine. First Kings 11, verse nine. Um, 
It says, and the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore, the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee. Pay attention and will give it thy servant. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Who was Solomon's son? Rehoboam. We're about to check that out. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom. What kingdom is he talking about? The 12 tribes of Israel. He's, the Lord is telling Solomon before he died, I'm going to split the kingdom in half. Okay? I'm going to split it because of your transgression. Because Solomon had a thousand wives and he, he in his old age, he whored himself out to false gods. OK, because of his his wives, many of them were strange wives, meaning they were strangers. Did the Lord have a problem with Solomon because he married strange women? No, it's because the, he his heart turned from the Lord and he went after false gods. And when you marry these strangers, Israel, a lot of times they don't be trying to serve God. I didn't say all the time. I said a lot of times they don't be trying to serve God. And so they, they will try to encourage you to walk away from the most high if your faith is there. And they will try to persuade you to worship some demons. OK, they ain't going to tell you, hey, we worship devils. But when you ain't worshiping God, what is you worshiping? But I digress. OK, now the Lord said, I'm going I'm going to split the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son uh, for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Okay, now let's skip down. Let's go to, matter of fact, uh, we're going to go to chapter 12, 1 Kings 12. I'm just going to skip for the sake of time. Okay, now, once, okay, so Jeroboam was uh, the one who took over for the northern kingdom. 10 tribes of our people. Judah had Judah and excuse me, Judah and Benjamin. Okay. At first, we're not going to read it, but I believe it's in first Chronicles. It, it shows you that when, when Jeroboam took over for the Northern kingdom, Rehoboam, Solomon's son was king over Judah and Benjamin was, was with them. Now, Levi, you could say there was 10 tribes in the North but you could also say it was nine and a half because uh, in first Chronicles, it, it shows you that when Jeroboam took over, he fired Levi from being the priesthood. OK, and he made the base of the people priests to offer, you know, strange fire to these false gods. Um, So but Levi hadn't an, he didn't have an inheritance in the land, but Levi had a portion in everybody's city, all 12 tribes. Levi was everywhere. OK, because he was the priest. Now. Let's read this. First Kings 12 and verse. Uh, let me see. Verse uh, 17. Um, it says, but as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Skip down to uh, to verse 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. You need to understand that, brothers and sisters, even to this day, we are not unified. You think it's bad with we well, some of us in America may be from the same tribe. OK, most of us are from the southern kingdom, but we barely get along over here. OK, now imagine us still being in the Holy Land, but not getting along with 10 tribes of our family. You understand? So it's bad. The 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 disorder, the chaos, the the madness is bad with our people. Real bad. OK, and it's not going to be fixed no matter how many pep talks, you know, Israel keep trying to put out there about unity and all this. Look, you can unify with brothers and sisters that love the Lord like you do. However, as far as having this fantasy of all 12 tribes going to unify somehow before Messiah comes back, I'm telling you to your face, it ain't going to happen. OK, the most high, when he come, he will restore us. He will unify us. OK. The, we can do the best that we can do by being faithful to him, loving him, keeping our keeping his commandments. You understand? Loving our brothers and our sisters. However, I'm saying all of our family is not going to get it right until Messiah come and fix this thing. OK, now let's uh, 
Let's look at verse 20. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel, the 10 tribes, right? There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. Now, later, Benjamin came and, and chilled with Judah and became one with them. And then Levi was fired. Le the tribe of Levi was fired by Jeroboam and they started staying with Judah. That's why you got Judah, Benjamin and Levi in the southern kingdom. And you had the nine tribes, Asher and Naphtali and all them and Gad and Dan. They was all still in the northern northern part in, in uh, Samaria was their capital. OK, now um, let me see. Let's look at. Let's look at. Uh, OK, look at verse twenty five. OK, verse 25. Now. This is first Kings 12. OK, first Kings 12 and verse 25. And I'm just running it down, brothers and sisters, and I'm proving to you that the Lord married his people. He prophesied that his people would turn against him and that he was going to bring <clears throat> he was going to bring a foolish nation to provoke his people to anger. Right. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but I'm going to show you who that foolish nation was that he was talking about. <clears throat> and now we looked at, OK, when a man has a wife and he finds some uncleanness in her, he can write her a bill of divorce, put her away, send her out of his house. She can go be another man's wife. If that second covenant doesn't work, she cannot come back to the first husband because that would be an abomination. Right. Again, brothers and sisters, please, please keep that in mind, because that's the foundation to understanding this. By the time we get to the New Testament, you will see it unless you just don't want to see it. OK, uh, first Kings 12 and 25, 25. <clears throat> then Jeroboam, he's the king of the northern kingdom. OK, the kingdom split out the Solomon died. <clears throat> Jeroboam took over for the northern kingdom. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, took over for the southern kingdom. It was only Judah and Benjamin in the southern kingdom at first. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and, bent, and built Penuel. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So Jeroboam had this wicked idea. I'm going to prevent the northern kingdom from unifying with the southern kingdom. But this thing really did come from the Lord. OK, the Lord put that in his mind because the Lord told Solomon, I'm going to split the kingdom because of your sin. OK. But Jeroboam had this evil idea that he was going to do this, keep the unification from happening. Right. Uh, it says, uh, this people shall, their hearts shall turn again to their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold, two calves of gold and said unto them, to the 10 tribes, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Big problem because we already got in trouble many many centuries before this for the same thing okay and he set one in bethel and the other put he in dan and this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto dan okay and he made an house of high places meaning he made temples and made priests of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of levi and jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month like unto the feast that is in judah and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. So he fired Levi. Levi went and stayed with Judah for the most part. There were still some Levites with the northern kingdom, brothers and sisters. But for the most part, majority of the Levites went and stayed with Judah. Okay. Now, let's go to 2 Kings 17. So many, many, many years later, most of the kings of Israel, when you read through first and second kings, or when you read through from first Kings 12 and you and you read all the way through to second Kings, right? 
uh, you will find majority of the kings of Israel walked in the sins of Jeroboam and they continued to teach Israel, the northern kingdom, to do evil, to provoke God to jealousy. Right. Judah, for the most part, was good for the most part. But then Judah start getting crazy because Judah saw when when we brought to read this, Judah watched this happen to the northern kingdom and Judah did not have fear. Judah did not fear the Lord when they saw this happen to, to you know, the northern kingdom Israelites. You understand? So this is a life lesson in itself. When you see somebody else, when you see your own flesh get done in by the Lord for their transgressions, brothers and sisters, that need to make you fear him. You understand to depart from evil and do what is right and lawful in his eyes, man, because you will be next. If you don't fear the Lord, if you don't think he if you think he's going to bypass you because you somehow special. First King 17, then we're going we're going to finish this out. I ain't going to hit everything. I, I doubt, but we're going to do our best. First King 17. I mean, I'm sorry. Second Kings 17. My bad. Second King 17. Uh, we're going to pick it up at verse um verse let me see we'll start this at verse one in the twelfth year of ahaz king of judah <clears throat> began hosea the son of eli to reign in samaria uh over israel nine years now i want to paint this picture so you understand the ge uh, geographical locations okay galilee is um is above samaria Samaria, the capital of northern Israel, is above Jerusalem. Jerusalem is above Esau's land, okay, Mount Seir, okay? Now, the reason why that's going to make sense, it's important that you understand that, is because <clears throat> the northern kingdom, well, you'll see, you'll see, I, I'm not going to say that, you'll see. Verse 2, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him, against Hosea, king of Israel, right, came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, okay, and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, okay, and brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. So Hosea went to the king of uh, Egypt, the Pharaoh, to try to get help to fight against Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. The Lord is the one who sent Shalmaneser and the Assyrians on the northern kingdom because of their evil. Are you following me? And so this didn't his little conspiracy did not work. Right. And it says, as he had done year by year, therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land of Samaria, northern Israel, and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. OK. Cut off the water supply, cut off the food supply. Great famine, okay? That's how you take a people down, okay? As you kill off the resources first. Verse 6, in the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried away Israel into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. So took them down from Samaria through Jerusalem took all the way down, took them down to um, uh, Iran and Iraq, okay? Not so much Iraq, but mostly Iran, okay? In places of Turkey. I'm going to show you that, okay? Now, this is important because remember, there was four European dynasties. We're in the fourth one now, Rome, right? So remember, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, the Medes and the Persians, Iran, um, you know, the Iranians, Right. The real Iranians, not these European looking ones that that's the seed of Japheth. The real Iranians is black. OK. Nevertheless, then you had Greece. Greece is Japheth. OK. Javan. OK. And then you got Rome. Now, stay with me. Don't let me confuse you. Stay with me on what I'm what I'm, I'm trying to show you. Verse seven. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their God, not Judah. Stay with me. Good evening, uh, Sister Savannah. Good evening. Praise the Lord, everybody that's here and watching. So we in 2 Kings uh, 17 and verse 7. Okay. 
the Lord says, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their God. You need to understand how the Lord talks, brothers and sisters. He don't talk like flesh. OK, we talk and we can understand each other. God talk superior to man's language. You understand? So that's why we need to humble ourselves and understand what he's saying, what he means when he says what he say. It's not cut and dry like the Lord said, for example, um, uh, I'm going to show you, but he said in Isaiah, uh, it's a light thing that I'm going to send you to, to restore, to preserve to Israel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you to be a light to the Gentiles. See, you thinking in your human understanding, oh, the Lord's talking about the strangers. No, sir. That's not who he was talking about. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to show you that. Okay. So when the Lord say the children of Israel, he's not talking about all 12 tribes. Okay. Read and you'll understand the context has sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods and walked in the statutes of the heathen, the other nations, right? Whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, not the children of Judah. He's not talking to Judah. He's talking about Israel, the northern kingdom. Remember, the kingdom is split, okay? It got split right after Solomon died. Never forget this, brothers and sisters. Never forget that. The kingdom is split, we not one family right now. Not even when Christ came did he unify both nations of our people, which is we really one family, but we split. And that's that's divine. That come from the Lord. OK, Jesus did not fix that at his first coming. OK, that's not going to be fixed until the second coming. I'm, a, I'm I don't know if I'm going to get to it tonight, but I'm going to try to show you. OK, it says. Uh, Whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things which were that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away from are carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger for they served idols whereof the Lord has said unto them, ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah. So all of them prior verses, you can tell now in verse 13, he wasn't talking about Judah. He was talking about Israel, the Northern kingdom. Okay. It's going to make sense. Stay with me. Then he says, yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah. Cause I told you, for the most part, Judah obeyed the Lord, okay? But when Judah saw Israel going to captivity, Judah would start doing evil too and did not fear, okay? Now, it says, by all the prophets and by all the seers, because that was another name for the prophets, okay, saying, turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets, notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden their necks, harden their necks, like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord, their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord, their God, and made them molten images, even two calves and made a grove and worshiped all the host of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination, witchcraft and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But the Lord, that's how he talked. So, because it's, he's including Benjamin and Levi in that. That's why he says Judah, because Judah was the largest of those two, those other two tribes. Just like when the Lord refers to the northern kingdom as Ephraim, that's because Ephraim became the largest of the northern kingdom tribes. You understand? This is how the Lord talks. It says, uh, also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Now, that's prophecy, right? Because he did that much later. OK, now. Um, now, so so like I said, keep in mind. 
Keep in mind, and then look at verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, Iraq, and from Kutha, Kutha and from Ava, and from Hamad. These are places in Turkey. You look them up. These are places in Turkey, okay? And Iraq, and all that. Iran, and all that, okay? And from Hamath and from Sepharvim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. That does not mean, brothers and sisters, that there were no northern kingdom Israelites left in the land. It means majority of them got taken out. The Lord left the poor. OK, there were some poor Israelites that were still up there. OK, you read the book of Luke. It tells you that Anna, who was a prophetess, was from the tribe of Asher and she's in the land. You understand? This is in the time of Christ. So all the northern kingdom was not taken out. Majority is they got taken out, okay, and and put into, uh, taken to another, a foreign land. Uh, like I'm telling you, places in Iran, uh, you know, place, eventually they got placed in Turkey and even in Greece, okay? Corinth was a place in Greece, okay? Now, keep in mind Deuteronomy 24, one through four. Please do not forget it. If you need to right now, go back and read it again. Deuteronomy 24, one through four, because that is the foundation, brothers and sisters. It will all make sense if you do not forget that. OK, now. So we see Israel did much evil. The northern kingdom we read after Solomon died, the Lord split the kingdom. Jeroboam took over for the northern kingdom. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, took over for the southern kingdom. The kingdom has not been unified and it will not be until the second coming of, of our, our Messiah. OK, kingdom is split. Israel's doing much evil. The Lord sends the Assyrians, take them out of the land, put strangers in the land. Um, there were still Israelites left, but put strangers in the land. Israel's carried away. Right. 722 B.C. is when this happened. You can look that up. OK, now let's go to. Okay, so we looked at that. Now, go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. And I want to show you something. Go to Isaiah chapter, chapter 7. Okay, now this is right before. Remember what we just read, brothers and sisters. Now this, what we about to read is right before the king of Assyria came and removed Israel out of the land in the year 722 BC. Isaiah was the prophet to, um, he was the prophet to kings of Israel, I believe. Um, I'm sorry, no, he was the prophet to Jerusalem. He was the prophet to the kings of Jerusalem. And he prophesied through four kings. And it's rumored that Isaiah was sawn and he was uh, cut in half by Manasseh, okay, but that's another topic. But nevertheless, so Judah, um, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Judah watched when the Lord took Israel out of the land. OK. Now, Isaiah seven, most of you probably have read this and, and never paid attention. OK, this is why you have to slow your roll and read to understand, humble yourself to understand this book. OK, the Lord is faithful and he will give us the understanding. Isaiah chapter seven and verse one. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria and Pekah, the son of Remelah, king of Israel, went up to uh, toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. So this is before Israel is taken out of the land. Now, Israel made a deal with Syria to try to do Jerusalem in. You understand? Wars. First and second Kings after after chapter 11, first and second Kings is riddled with wars between Israel and Judah. Our people fighting against each other constantly. You understand? Constantly. Now, when you read the prophets, these prophets live during the times of first and second Kings. OK, now Isaiah is alive when Israel and Syria is trying to do Judah in. You understand Jerusalem in. Now, watch what the Lord says, brothers and sisters. Watch what he say. And it was told the house of David saying Syria is confederate with Ephraim. Now, wait a minute. He just said Israel, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against. Now, why is he saying Ephraim? I'm, that's how I'm trying to tell you. That's how God talked. OK, it says Syria is confederate with Ephraim. Ephraim was the largest of the northern kingdom tribes. OK, so when you say Ephraim, you could say Ephraim, Israel, 
you're still talking about the northern kingdom. When you say Judah or Jerusalem, you're talking about the southern kingdom. I shouldn't say you. That's how the Lord talks. OK. And his heart was moved as in the heart of the people of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Now, watch what the Lord say. Watch what he say. OK. It's, it's going to blow your mind if you never read this before. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shear Jessup, Jessup th uh, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. And say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and of the son of Remelah, king of Israel. Right. Again, watch what he say. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remelah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabiel. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Please watch this. For the head of Syria is Damascus, meaning the capital, right? And the head of Damascus is Rezin, meaning this flesh man. He's the king, right? And within three score, 60 and five years, let me read it again. For the head of Samaria is Damascus and the head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years, within 65 years, Isaiah, from right now, 65 years from now, shall Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. That it be not a people. Wait a minute. Let's go back. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 32. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 32, because maybe you didn't catch that. Deuteronomy 32, and we're going to pick it up at verse, uh, verse tw uh, 20, verse 20. You read the whole chapter, you, I pray the Lord give you understanding. You will see how the Lord is talking about Israel. Then he's talking about Judah and back and forth. Okay. Even though he don't even use the names Israel and Judah. Okay. But when you understand the rest of the scriptures, you can come back to this and understand that's who he's talking about because it, it only fits. It got to fit like a puzzle piece. Look at this. Deuteronomy 32, verse 20. And he said, this is the Lord talking. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I'm telling you before we finish it, he's talking about the northern kingdom. The split hadn't even happened yet, brothers and sisters. But the Lord know everything. He knows all things. The split haven't even happened and the Lord is talking about, I'm going to hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God, the northern kingdom. I'm going to prove it right here. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. My bad. I didn't. I meant to say he's talking about Judah. OK, Judah did much evil and, and pissed the most high off our forefathers. OK, and the Lord said, I'm going to provoke Judah. He didn't mention Judah, but I'm telling you, that's who he's talking about. He said, I'm going to I'm going to move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Now, go back to Isaiah chapter seven. Go back to Isaiah seven. And we're going to read it again. Verse eight. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. Who is Ephraim? The northern kingdom. The Lord said within, he told Isaiah, tell, tell uh, uh, Ahaz, within 65 years from now, I'm going to break Ephraim. I'm going to break the northern kingdom, and they're not going to be a people no more. Now, you may be saying, so how can God fix that then? Let me let me let, let's go deeper. Let's go to Jeremiah. We're going to come back to Isaiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. Remember, I told you, keep in mind Deuteronomy 24 verses one through four. Remember, I told you if you haven't go back and read it real quick, go back and read it so you can understand so you can keep up. OK. Now, Jeremiah, chapter three. They say, verse one, they say. If a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? 
Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Who's he talking about? The northern kingdom. The northern kingdom. And Judah, really. And Judah. Now, skip down. Skip down to verse... Um. Skip down to verse 6. Matter of fact, verse 5. Um, let's start at verse 4. Let's, let's start at verse 4. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the God of my youth? You going to still be puffed up? This is what the Lord is saying to Israel and Judah. You still going to be puffed up or you're not going to cry to me? I want you to cry to me. Why? Will he reserve his anger forever? No. Will he keep it to the end? No. Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backslide in Israel, not Judah, which backslide in Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there have played the harlot. And I said after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Do you understand now? Let's keep going. Verse 8. And I saw, this is the Lord saying, And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Now you may be saying, so, so brother Paul, what you're saying is God divorced the northern kingdom? Yes. He divorced them. That's what he's telling you in verse 8. That he divorced the northern kingdom. In the year 70, what some people say 70 AD or AD 70. In the year 70, God divorced us too, Judah. It's all going to make sense. I, I promise you it will make sense if you humble yourself. Not because I'm the master teacher. Because God is the one that gives us understanding. I'm just a human vessel. I want to be used for righteousness. So if it comes through me, amen to the most high. Okay? But... The Lord said he divorced the northern kingdom. He told Isaiah, tell Ahaz, 65 years from now, Ephraim going to be broken and they're not going to be a people. They will not be a people. Deuteronomy 32, the Lord said, I saw what they did. They was doing all this evil. And so they, they're going to provoke me with things which are not God. I'm going to provoke them with, with those which are not a people, with a foolish nation. That's what he said, right? Verse eight again. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backslide in Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Divorced her. That's going to make sense. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Right now. Let's go to. Let's go to let's go back to Isaiah. Matter of fact, matter of fact. Let me see. Do I want to go to Isaiah? Um, before we go to Isaiah, let's go to Hosea, the book of Hosea. Go to the book of Hosea and look at verse. We're going, we're going to Hosea chapter one. And uh, we're going we're going to look at verse six. Now, God tells Hosea, go marry a, a, a whore, have children with her. These are the names you're going to give your children when you have them. Right. Reason why? Because the Lord was showing him uh, he was he was allowing him to humanly understand God and us, the 12 tribes of Israel. But we two people right now, we two nations. OK, God have two sons. He don't just have one son right now. OK, because of the split. Okay, Hosea 1 and verse 6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name uh, Lo, uh, Lo Rahama, for I will no more have mercy. I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, the house of Israel. When we get to the testimony or the New Testament, you will understand this. Okay? But I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. So how is he going to save us? By the blood of his only begotten son. You understand? And this is not the father talking per se. This is the word. This is Jesus talking. But he speaks on behalf of the father. Okay. So the Lord said, I'm not going to save my people Judah 
And he talking, he going to save Israel too. We're going to read that in Jeremiah. He's, I'm not going to save you by, by power, like just physical brute force. He said, we know he saved us through the blood of his son, Isaiah 53. That's how he saved us, through the blood of his son. He forgave our sins. See, it's, it's deep. It's so deep. Now, when she had, uh, when she had weaned Lo, uh, Rahama, uh, Rahama, she conceived and bare a son. Now, watch this. Then said God, call his name Lo Ami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Now, who are he talking to? Israel, the northern kingdom. Why? Because Jeremiah 3, God told Jeremiah, I divorced Israel because of her sins. And Judah didn't even get afraid of that. Judah went and played the harlot too and did worse. If you keep on reading in Jeremiah 3, the Lord said, uh, treacherous, uh, uh, it, he said backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Because at least, see, Israel was doing evil just, you know, they didn't have no pr uh, uh, provoking happen happening to them. They didn't see other people doing evil and then was like, oh, we're going to copy that. We read Jeroboam made two golden calves. OK, now you may say, well, he probably remembered Egypt. OK, but he didn't. Nobody was in his face doing evil to where he felt compelled to do that. He did that just on a, you know, that was just on him. Judah watched Israel do evil and continue to do evil and then to watch the Lord take them out of the Holy Land and and spiritually divorce them. And Judah didn't even get afraid. Judah went and did evil more than Israel. You understand? So the, in verse nine, Hosea one and nine, the Lord said, call his name Lord me for you are not my people and I'm not going to be your God. He's talking to the northern kingdom. I'm going to prove it. OK, now let's look at. Let's look at uh, go to chapter. I want to say it's chapter 12, Hosea chapter 12. OK, and I'm going to show you now we're going to get into history, but we're going to look at Jeremiah real quick and then Isaiah. And I'm going I'm to show you through history. OK, uh, you need to read this whole book of Hosea, by the way, if you have not already. As far once you understand this, what we talking about here today, read the whole book of Hosea. I'm telling you to blow your mind, man. OK, now. um. Hosea 12, I think it's Hosea 12. Um, let me see. No, that's not Hosea 12. Let me see, what, what verse is that? Um... Um, maybe it's chapter 14. Okay. Um, no, that's not it. Anyway, just to save time, the Lord talks about how he say, um, he say Ephraim is a, is a liar. Here it is. Uh, Hosea 11 and verse 12. The Lord say, Ephraim, or the northern kingdom, compasseth me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruleth with God, and is faithful with the saints. Now, Judah was still in the Holy Land for a season, okay? Even after Israel got carried away in the captivity by the Assyrians, okay? In the year, in the year I want to say it was 587 or 589, Judah went uh, to Babylon, or modern-day Iraq, for 70 years, Right? And then they came back and they built a second temple. And then Messiah came after that, sometime after that. And then when Messiah, before he went back to the father, he prophesied that Judah was going to go in, in, into worldwide captivity. You understand? Now, when, so, so once you, if you understand that, as far as history goes, when you, when you look at Luke 15, for example, the prodigal son, see, it don't really make sense the way it's supposed to if you don't understand this you understand the mystery of the gentiles now let me show you something let's go to jeremiah again jeremiah 31 jeremiah 31 shalom shalom to everybody that's joining shalom um okay jeremiah 31 and verse uh verse um 
We'll start at verse 15. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna going to, I'm just gonna tell you, the Lord is talking about Israel, the northern kingdom, who he calls Ephraim or Israel. Okay. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not, right? Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears. He's talking to the northern kingdom, okay? Now, in the days of Jeremiah, Judah had just went into Babylon, or, or they was about to go into, into Babylon, modern-day Iraq, okay? Israel was already in captivity, okay? Already at over 200-something years, you understand? So they was being done in, not just by the Assyrians, but by the Medes, by the Persians, okay? These Iranians, okay? And then Greece came in the days of Daniel, okay? Well, I want to say after the days of Daniel, but Greece came, did Israel in even worse. Now, we're going to pause on Greece, but we're going to come back to that. The Lord says, uh, refrain, thy, refrain uh, thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears for, the, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord. Because there were still some, some Israelites, Shalom, uh, Elder Rodney, there were still some Israelites from the northern kingdom that had faith in Messiah. Okay? And they were carried away captive. Just like Daniel was from the southern kingdom, but he was in captivity. Right? Jeremiah was too. You understand? I'm sorry, not Jeremiah. Uh, let me keep my focus. Okay, look, it says, uh, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy, talking about the northern kingdom. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, meaning I've, the Lord said, I've heard my, my people Israel, the northern kingdom, crying, crying. Maybe not physical tears, but spiritually crying out to God, right? And, and they've been saying this. Thou hast chastened me, and I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. This is what the northern kingdom was crying out to God about while they was in captivity. And they still in captivity, just like Judah, we still in captivity. You understand? But this is a long time ago. This is before Christ came in the flesh. Ephraim was crying out to God because they was by the time of Jeremiah, they was already in captivity over 200 years. OK, because in the days of Jeremiah, Judah was going into Babylon. OK, in the 500s. Verse verse 19. Surely after that, I was turned. I repented. And after that, I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed. Yeah, even confounded because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Watch, watch the love of God, brothers and sisters, towards his people, Israel. We, most of us in, in this Western hemisphere, we come from the Southern kingdom, from Judah. The Lord love us too. He love us just as much as he love our brothers and sisters from the Northern kingdom. But I'm trying to break it down so you understand this mystery, because this is not easily understood. Okay. This is why people run around. I used to do it too. People run around talking about the strangers in the New Testament is white people. That is a lie. The strangers in the New Testament are the northern kingdom Israelites, and they're not strangers. They was called Gentiles because God divorced them. And when a man divorces a wife, when he divorces his wife, that, that his last name is taken from her. You understand? We're going to get to that. This is what the Lord says about Ephraim or Israel. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Did not we just read in the book of Hosea, the Lord said, name, name your son this, name your daughter. That. I'm not going to have mercy on, on this people no more. I'm not going to be your God. You're not going to be my people. Is it making sense yet? Huh? Okay, let's go to uh, Isaiah uh, 48. And then we're going to go to the, the testimony or the New Testament. Isaiah, um, for, is it 48? Uh, let me see. Um, no. No, 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 not 48, 49. 
49. Yes, 49 and verse verse 5. We'll start at Isaiah 49, verse 5. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing. This is the father. Ta the, the, the word is telling, telling us more. So he's telling Isaiah about the conversation that him and the father have had. Okay. Verse six. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, the northern kingdom. Right. I mean, not just the northern kingdom, but all of Israel. Right. All 12 tribes. It's a light thing for you to do that. And to restore the preserved of Israel. Keep in mind history, brothers and sisters. In the year 722 BC, the northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians and removed from the Holy Land. There were scragglers from, from the northern kingdom that was left in the land. But most of the northern kingdom was taken out of the, of the Holy Land. And strangers were put there. People who were not Israelites. Okay. Now, the preserved of, of Israel was judah judah benjamin and levi was still in the land okay they went into babylon or iraq for 70 years in the year uh, uh five i think it was five five eighty nine or five eighty seven one of those i could be wrong you can check it out they went into babylon so this is over 200 some years later right they went into babylon for 70 years they came back built a second temple okay and some some many years later uh christ came Right. The northern kingdom is still gone. They still not in the, in the house. OK. Judah is preserved because Judah was still in the land. You understand now? It says, I will also give thee a lot for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. So for you, brothers and sisters that think the Lord never referred to his people as Gentiles. There you go. I'm going to prove that because you may be saying, but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. OK, I'm going to prove it. OK, even further, he said, I'm, he said, it's a light thing that you're going to uh, raise up the, tri the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel, restore the preserved of Israel. Right. Meaning Judah, who was still in the land. I will also give you for light to the Gentiles that you might be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Now you may be saying, see, if you if you love the strangers more than your own people, this is why it's not making sense. I'm not telling you don't love the strangers. The Lord said that he loved the strangers, brothers and sisters. And so should we. But what I'm saying is we can't make the, when the Lord is talking to us, we have to get out of this, this Stockholm syndrome where we love the oppressor. And I ain't saying all the strangers is oppressing us. What I'm saying is we have to get out of this mindset that, oh, no, right here. God is talking about the other nations. No, he is not. He's talking about us. He loved us. He said, I'm going to bless you above all the people that's on the face of the earth. Us. The stranger's going to be with us. He ain't talking to them directly. He's talking to us. You need to understand this. Okay. Now he said, I'm going to, send, I'm going to give you for a light to the Gentiles, right? Let's see. Let's see who, who these Gentiles are. And because now we're going to go to the New Testament. But I'm going to give you a little backstory on history briefly. Okay. Now, when... Let me see. I'm looking for that verse. I posted it the other day. Um, let me see. Chapter 8. Ver, uh, chapter Isaiah 9. Okay, we're going to read that real quick. But, backstory on history. Okay. Ezekiel the prophet, he was in captivity. He's talking about the restoration of Israel. A lot. Right? Um, Daniel comes along. Daniel's in Babylon. Okay, under Nebuchadnezzar and... Um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's son, right? And even the, I think the, the first few years of Darius, the king of, uh, the Medes, I believe, or the Persians, the Iranians, right? Okay. Shortly after that, um, Greece comes along. Now Greece destroyed, I mean, destroyed our people, Israel, not physically brothers and sisters, spiritually Greece Hellenized our people, Israel from the Northern kingdom. Bad. I mean, real bad. Look at history. OK, look at history. Don't just take somebody's word for these things. Research so you can know for yourself. 
the the Greeks when they took over when J Van took over under Alexander and his four generals, right? They Hellenized most of the Northern Kingdom Israelites, most of the nine and a half tribes. Okay, and it was bad. That's why in the time of Christ, we're going to read some scriptures on that. In the time of Christ, the book talked about these Greeks, right? And see, if we if we try to base God's word on human understanding, we're going to be thinking these Greeks is white people. No, sir. No, sir. These Greeks was Israelites from the northern kingdom that had been Hellenized. Timothy and Titus. It said that their fathers were Greeks. They were not white boys. They was Israelites. Their fathers, when it says they were their fathers was Greeks and their mothers was a Jewess or their mother was an Israelite. The father was a Hebrew too. He was just given over to the customs of the nations of the ruling class in that day. You understand? And when Rome came, Rome just carried on what Greece already started. And Rome did worse. That's why Daniel said this fourth beast was exceeding dreadful and terrible and destroyed the whole earth. You understand? Now, Isaiah 49 and verse 6, the Lord said, I'm going to give you for light to the Gentiles that you might be my salvation, that you will be my salvation to the ends of the earth, right? We about to go to the New Testament. I had to give you the backstory on history. Please keep up with me. Isaiah 9 and verse 1. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. In Galilee of the nations. Nations means Gentiles in one form. In another form, it means sons and daughters of Japheth. Okay. The people, verse two, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, a great light. I'm going to give you for a light to the Gentiles, to the nations. Is not there 10 nations within the northern kingdom? Or you could say nine and a half. Yes, it is. Just like there's two and a half tribes in the southern kingdom, two and a half nations. Because all 12 tribes, we're not unified. You understand? Judah is not at peace with Levi. We don't even know what tribe we come from, but nobody amongst Israel is totally unified. That's why we are sitting here arguing over scriptures because we're not even unified. That's why we have to strive to keep the unity through the bond. of. Uh, we need to keep try to keep the peace through the spirit, through the bond of peace. You understand? Because it's difficult because of the curse that's on us. The brother whose eye was tender toward his brother, he going to have an evil eye towards his brother. The sister, same thing, even towards their family. You understand? This is a curse on us. Until the Messiah's second coming, it's going to be like that, unfortunately. But we, those of us that follow Messiah, we can do the best that we can do and hope for God's mercy upon us. You understand? Verse two, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them have the light shined. I'm going to give you for light to the Gentiles. Keep this in mind. Deuteronomy 24. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now, let's go to Matthew. New Testament. Matthew 4. Matthew 4 and verse 12. Jesus is baptized. Right. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. He had been tempted 40 days and 40 nights by the devil. Right. He overcame. Right. Now, He's going to whom he was sent to. Catch what I said. Going to whom he was sent to. Judah, if you've been keeping up thus far, you understand Judah was still in the land. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They were still in the house. Luke 15. They were still in the house. You understand? Israel, the northern kingdom, Ephraim was already gone. They were scattered. You understand? Now you can begin to understand Jesus's missionary work. He was not going to some other races of people, some other nationality, some other groups of people. He was going to whom he was sent to. I will give you for a light to the Gentiles, not the other nations, brothers and sisters, his people. Keep up. Matthew 4, verse 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. We just read that, Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali. Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. Isaiah 49 and verse 6. 
that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So who's these Gentiles that Jesus went to? I'm going to show you the people which sat in darkness, saw great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death. Light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hmm. Hmm. OK, we're getting somewhere. Let's go to Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. And let's pick it up at verse 21. Then Jesus, matter of fact, we're going to skip just for the sake of time. OK, this Sarah Phoenician woman came to Christ. Can you heal my daughter? Jesus ignored her. She kept on, you know, beseeching him. And he, he didn't say he then he turned around and he said this verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus was not sent to um, other nationalities of people. He was not sent to the Europeans. He was not sent to the Asians. He was not sent to uh, nobody else, not the Hamites. He was sent to his people, to Israel, to Israel. Judah was still in the house. He came to, to deal with Judah too, but he came specifically to save Ephraim. You understand? To reconcile Ephraim. Be why? Because at this point in time, brothers and sisters, when the Lord came in the flesh, he had not yet divorced Judah. He didn't divorce us yet. That's why we were still in his house. You understand? Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4. If a man have a wife and he finds some uncleanness in her and he put her, he and he, uh, and he finds some uncleanness in her, he must give her the bill of divorcement and put her away, send her out of his house. She can go be another man's wife, right? If that second covenant doesn't work, she can't come back to the first husband because that is an abomination. That would be considered adultery, right? I'm, it's it's going to blow your mind by the end of this. You stay put. The Lord said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? And in the prophets, he said, my people, Jeremiah 23, if I'm not mistaken, he said, my people, Israel, have been lost sheep. He wasn't talking about Judah. He said, my people, Israel, have been lost, have been lost sheep. You understand? Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to, um, let's go to John. John chapter 7. John chapter 7 and verse 35. John 7 and 35. Matter of fact, we'll start at uh, 33. Then said Jesus unto them, yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, then said Judah, then said big brother. Why? Because Ephraim is younger than Judah. Go back and read the order that Jacob had his sons in. Judah is older than Ephraim. Luke 15 makes perfect sense when you understand that. The older son was still in the house. The younger son went out and lived crazy. And then he's bemoaning himself and he's crying for his dad. And he said, I want to come back home. And the dad sees him a long way off and says, come on, I've been waiting on you. Don't he won't even let his son say, look, I'm not even worthy to be your son no more. Just let me be a servant. He said, put a, man, put, man, dress him up. We about to throw a feast because my son was lost. But now he's found the older son was upset, right? It's deep. 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed, the dispersed who got dispersed from the Holy Land? Israel, Ephraim did. We read that, brothers and sisters. We read it. This ain't my words, okay? Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? Meaning, is he going to go to Israel? Is he going to go to them Gentiles that's living amongst the heathen? And teach these Gentiles? So even Judah was referring to the northern kingdom as Gentiles. The Lord said it first, though. We read that in Isaiah. He called them Gentiles first. We read in Hosea, the Lord said, you're not going to be my people. I'm not going to be your God. I ain't going to have mercy on you. Then we read in Jeremiah, he said, I'm going to have mercy on you because Ephraim is my dear son and I love him. The Lord said, my bowels are troubled for him, meaning the Lord is crying over his younger son. You understand? 
the Lord said, he said, he told Isaiah, tell Ahaz within 65 years from now, Ephraim going to be broken and they're not going to be a people. You go back and read Deuteronomy 32. The Lord said he was talking about Judah. He said, Judah done pissed me off and they done, they've been worshiping these gods that are no gods. I'm going to provoke them to jealousy with a people which are no people, with a foolish nation. Talking about their own flesh and blood, our own kinsmen, the northern kingdom. Okay, let's go further. Let, let me read 35 again, just for the sake. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? They weren't talking about, is he going to go to the northern kingdom that's scattered amongst the heathen and teach the heathen? They weren't saying that. They were saying, is he going to go to Israel and teach them, though they be Gentiles? He divorced them. How can he go and, and reconcile to them now? That would be adultery. Why? Because I'm, I'm going to save it. I, I want to go there, but I'm going to save it. Let's go to, let's go to, uh, let me see. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy 3 and verse 16. And then we're going to go back to John. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let's do that. Let's go to the book of John real quick. I I don't think we're going to get to all of it, but maybe another time we'll, we'll hit part two. Okay, look, John 10, John 10, and let's look at 11, John 10, 11. I'm, this is master talking. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, for the sheep. Who's God's sheep? The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So Jesus came to die for the sins of his people. That is what he said. You understand that he in Matthew one, Gabriel came to Mary, the virgin. Yeah, she was a virgin for you, brothers and sisters that don't think that she was. She was a virgin. That's why it was a miracle. You understand? But nevertheless, Gabriel told Mary, you're going to bear a son. He's going to be called the son of the highest. And he going to save his people from their sins. The blessing, like I keep saying in my Sabbath day videos, the blessing of Jesus dying for us and being raised back to life, it goes to whoever in the world wants to receive it. But he did it for his bride, for his wife. Somebody will understand. He said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Right? Let's skip down. 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. 16. And other sheep I have. Notice who he's talking to. First of all, he's talking to Judah. Big brother that's still in the house at that time. And other sheep I have. Did the Lord once show me one scripture? The Lord ever talked about the strangers being his sheep. Show me one and I believe you. Show me one. He don't never call the strangers his sheep. He only call us the 12 tribes of his people. He only calls us his sheep, brothers and sisters. 16 again. And other sheep I have. Ephraim is who he's talking about. And he's talking to Judah. He says, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. And there, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Hmm. He said, other sheep I have. He's telling Judah, look, I got to go get your brother. I got to go get Ephraim. And then I'm going to unify y'all through my blood. See, you still going to have this discord because these spiritual, these divine curses that's on us. You understand? But if you, if you're in me, you're a new creature, right? I've broken down that middle wall of hatred between you. North and South, and south kingdoms of Israel. No more you're going to be beefing with your brothers and sisters. You're going to love them. You understand? But those that are not in Christ, they still that old man. That's why they out in the streets killing one another. And don't think twice about it. Let's go further. Let's go to. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. And without controversy, without controversy, without argument, without debate, you say the strangers is who Paul and them went to in the New Testament. 
so far what we've been reading, that don't that is not the case. That is not the case at all. So what you're doing is leaning to your own understanding. You're not humbling yourself to allow the father to teach you what his word means. He said, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I will make known my words unto you. That means you ain't going to understand God's word without him allowing you to understand it. People run, run around here giving the devil too much credit. Oh, he know the book better than a lot of Christians. The devil don't know jack squat. That's why he think he's still going to win against the Messiah at the second coming. Because he, he didn't read certain scriptures, but he don't get it. That's why he twisting it. Why? Because he's a sinner. I'm digressing. Let's go on. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, good and bad, preached unto the Gentiles. Was Jesus preached to um to the descendants of Ham? Was Jesus preached to the descendants of Japheth? Was Jesus preached to the Edomites? Was he preached to uh, the Dravidian Indians who were also Shemitic? No, sir. Jesus was preached to his people, to his people. Who did Jesus go to? He, the book said he dwelt in Capernaum in the seacoast in Galilee of the Gentiles. Jesus was calling disciples from the northern kingdom and southern kingdom. Jesus went to his people. He went to the lost sheep of Israel. See, you got to stop lumping all 12 tribes together every time you see Israel. It ain't talking about all 12 tribes all the time. Sometimes it's talking about the northern kingdom. Sometimes it's talking about all 12 tribes. This is how God talked. Why? Because the kingdom is not unified. We're not one family right now. We're two nations of people. You understand? We're still flesh and blood Israelites, but we're two nations of people. I'm going to show you that in Ezekiel. He said, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Who believed him? Israel and Judah. The remnant believed him. You understand? Okay, let's go to the book of John. I want to say it's John 11. Almost done. I ain't going to take up too much more of your time. John 11. I believe, uh, let me see, um, no, that's not it, let's see, where is that? That's not good. Too far. Um, John. Let me see. John 7. John 7, brothers and sisters. I think. Um. Where is that? Mm. No, not John 7. I'm sorry. I'm looking for it. Give me a moment. I want to show you. Even, even a Samaritan woman in John 4, that Samaritan woman was an Israelite. She was a daughter of the Northern Kingdom. Um, That's another story, though. Uh... I can't find that verse now. Um, that's all right. I'll, if anybody wants it, I'll give it to you. But some of you may already know it. Jesus was at the feast in the book of John. And the book says some Greeks came up to the feast. Right? Some Greeks. And they was searching for Christ. They said, where's the Christ at? Where's Jesus at? And Philip told Andrew and Andrew told Christ. Right? Did Those Greeks were not Europeans. They was Israelites from the northern kingdom. I told you when Alexander the Great took over, when Greece uh, conquered uh, Medo-Persia, the Greeks Hellenized the northern kingdom bad to the point that the northern kingdom started calling themselves Greeks. It's, the, it's nothing new under the sun, brothers and sisters. It's just like America have conquered us here. Those of us from, from the southern kingdom that's here in America, they've conquered us to where we don't call ourselves Judah. What do we call ourselves? 
Gentiles, basically. We call ourselves African-American, black, Negro, colored. We don't call ourselves what God have, have uh, 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 given, you know, the name that he gave us. You understand? So the Northern Kingdom was calling, they, uh, many of them was calling themselves Greeks. Okay? So don't let that confuse you. Okay, if you if you've been following the storyline in this video, at least through the scriptures, then it's starting to make sense to you. OK, I pray that it, that the Lord give you eyes to see and ears to hear. OK, let's look at let's go to the book of Acts. We're going to look at Paul when Paul was converted. What did the master tell Paul? And then we're going to look at um, now. Now, we don't have time, but when you if you read through the book of Acts, take some time, you know, and read through the book of Acts, you will understand. Oh, I pray that the Lord give you understanding. You will see that Big Brother was persecuting Paul. Judah was persecuting Paul for going to the northern kingdom, for preaching to them. That's Paul's missionary work was he was mimicking Christ because that's the commandment that Christ gave him. Go to my people. I'm going to show you that. Acts 9 and look at verse... Look at verse 15, Acts 9 and 15. Because Paul went to the northern kingdom. Paul was dealing with Judah and the northern kingdom. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Bartholomew, all them. They were still dealing with Judah, but they was dealing with Israel too, who was being grafted in. Okay. Now you may be saying, well, why would Israel have to be grafted back in? Paul breaks it down in Romans 11, but see, we used to think I, I speak, I'll speak for myself. I used to think that he was talking about the whole the whole kingdom of Israel and some strangers, but he wasn't. The whole time he's talking about Israel and Judah, and he speaks it in a mysterious way. Why? Because the Lord said, "No flesh gonna glory in His presence." So you ain't gonna sit down and read His book and totally understand, because then how God gonna get the glory for revealing it to you? You see, humility is the master key to salvation. I'm trying to tell you, Acts nine and fifteen. But the Lord said unto him, to Ananias, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, before the Gentiles, northern kingdom, Israelites, and kings. Who was the kings in this day, in Paul's day? Rome. They was ruling. They was ruling in the days of Christ. Rome, before the Gentiles, northern kingdom, Israelites, and kings, the strangers, and the children of Israel, who was who was still known as the children of Israel? Judah was. Because Judah had not been divorced yet. Oh, I pray. I pray you get this, man. I pray you get this. Look, let's go further. Let's go to when Paul told them he told Judah, he said the word had to be preached to you first. Why? Because they were still in that. They were still in uh, the master's house. I, you know, I was going to say the daddy's house. They were still in daddy's house. At this time, that's why the word had to come to them first. But then Paul says, since you rejected him and count yourselves unworthy of salvation of everlasting life, rather, he said, "Lo, we turn to the Gentiles, the other nations. No, northern kingdom Israelites. Why? Because we need to be about our father's business. The father is reconciling his wife to himself. Now is not the time to skip over your own people, Israel, and go to the strangers. I'm not preaching hatred towards the strangers, man. If they want salvation, they can get it, too. I'm telling you the priority of the most high God of, of our fathers. He sends us to his people first because during the millennium is when the strangers is going to get the word. That's when they're going to want to hear the Bible from us. Look at this. Let me, let me since we're here, let me show you this. Acts 10. Acts 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea. Caesarea is a place in the Holy Land, brothers and sisters, called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now, you look up Italian band. When you look it up, you will find that it was called that because it was stationed in Italy. If I remember correctly, it was stationed in Italy and it was recruiting people. Recruiting people. Since when did Israel never join the strangers armies and navies and air force? Stop it. Come on. Stop it, man. We've been joining up with the strangers in warfare. OK, so Cornelius was not a white man. He was not an Italian man. He was a Israelite, 
of the northern kingdom. How you know, Brother Paul? Verse 2, a devout man. Since when did the Lord ever refer to the strangers as devout? I'm not saying that strangers don't love the most high, brothers and sisters, if they really do. I'm saying the Lord never, just like the sheep, the Lord never called the strangers his sheep. Only us. Only us. It says a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. What people? To Israel. To Israel. And prayed to God always. Right? Let's skip down. Let me show you. Let me show you how I know Cornelius was not a white man, but he was an Israelite brother. He was from the northern kingdom. Let me show you. Skip down. Go to verse 28. It said, now Peter came with the brothers from Judah, came to Cornelius' house, right? Cornelius called all his family and, and friends and everything. He said, man, we're going to hear the word from, you know, this brother from Judah, this righteous brother that followed the Messiah. You know how we talk to our people. You understand? So Peter and them come and Cornelius bowed down to him. Why? Because the northern kingdom was divorced. All you got to understand is they were divorced. God wasn't even dealing with them no more. That's why when God gave Cornelius the dream, he told him, go get Peter. Why? Because that's the protocol. That's protocol. If you ain't in covenant with God, God not just going to talk to you like he talked to the people that's in covenant with him. Israel was not in covenant with the Lord. They were just divorced and booted out of the house. Judah was still in the house temporarily. So God told Peter, go, go show him what I want, want you to show him. Because why? Because Cornelius is beloved. You understand the northern kingdom, God loved them just like he loved Judah. Now, Peter took him up and said, don't bow to me, man. I'm a man like you, brother. Now, look at this. 28. Now, you tell me what law this is, since you think this is about some strangers. What law is this? And Peter, this is what Peter said to Cornelius. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew or from Judah to keep company or come unto one of another nation of another nation of another nation. What law is that, brothers and sisters? Find me the find me in the law of God where God said, don't come unto one of another nation. Show me. Show me. Now, why would Peter tell Cornelius this? Because Peter is saying, look, man, see, just like the just like the, the Israelite woman from the northern kingdom told Christ, what you doing talking to me? Y'all don't have nothing to do with us. We don't deal with y'all and y'all don't deal with us. Why? Because the hatred between both nations of our people. We are two nations of people right now. We're not one, one nation. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you in the book of Ezekiel. We're not one nation right now. We're two nations. It's two kingdoms of our people. Okay? God got two sons. Luke 15. I'm trying to show you. So Peter's telling Cornelius, look, man, you know how, you know, those of us from Judah don't deal with y'all. Y'all another nation. Y'all Gentiles, man. We don't even deal with y'all like that. You know that. But God has showed me that I shall that I should not call any man common or unclean. This is not about strangers, brothers and sisters. This is about our people. This mystery of the Gentiles. OK, let's let's go further because Cornelius and them got baptized, got filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you had some Israelites that believed in Messiah, but they was. They was too focused on the law first. They didn't understand faith in Jesus is what justifies you. And then you start keeping the law, okay, to be saved. Not in and of itself. That's another topic. They came and told Cornelius and them, look, man, y'all got to be circumcised in order to be saved. Just jumping straight to the law, not giving them time to get their mind right. You don't just dump the whole law on somebody when they first get the word, okay? You baby, you baby feed them, okay? Milk of the word first, simple stuff. Then you add every Sabbath, okay? If the Lord will. So the apostles from that was in Jerusalem, they wrote to these uh, Gentiles or these Northern Kingdom Israelites that had just come come into the faith, okay? They was writing to them saying, "Look, man, don't worry about these brothers. Just deal with this simple this simple stuff first. Just don't eat things strangled with blood and sacrifice the idols and all that. Just and don't fornicate. Just deal with that." Why? Because the, if you read first and second Kings, the northern kingdom was into all of that mess. When you read the, the first chapter of Romans, Paul is talking about Israel. He's talking about the northern kingdom. He even tell you he taught he called them Gentiles. He say 
if the Gentiles do the things contained in the law, not, you know, not having the law, they are law unto themselves, right? But what was, what was Israel into? What was these Gentiles into? Homosexuality, lesbianism, all types of evil. You understand? And they was doing that while they was in the land. That's why God gave them the boot first. Then Judah saw and Judah didn't fear and Judah did worse. God gave us the boot too. But God have a master plan. Okay. Now. So. So. Okay. Let me. Let me go further. We almost done. Okay. Timothy. You can read about him in the book of Acts. He was not a European. He was a Israelite. Okay. He was an Israelite. His father. It said his father was a Greek. But it's, it's, it's not what you think. I, I'm trying to tell you, man. If you don't believe it, that's okay. That's between you and the Most High. I'm just telling you what the books say. His father was not a European man. His father was an Israelite who was Hellenized. He followed the Greek customs, okay? Just like Titus's dad. You understand? Now, let's go to Romans. See, Romans is extremely deep from Paul's hand uh, when he wrote this. By the inspiration of, of the Most High. Because when Paul would say Jew and Gentile, he's talking about Judah and Israel. Then he would say, um, he would say, uh, uh, um, he would say, let me go to chapter 11. He would say um, two kinds of branches, right? Shalom, uh, Sister Donita. Uh, he, he would talk about two types of branches, when you read in Hosea, the Lord refer, I believe it's Jeremiah rather, the Lord refers to the northern kingdom as a as a choice vine. Okay. He calls them a, a green fig tree. You understand? Paul uses that in Romans 11 to talk about Israel and Judah. Two fig trees. Okay. Um, so so um he he says he says uh <laughs> Look at this verse. This is Romans 11 and 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, not Europeans. I speak to you Gentiles, northern kingdom Hebrews. And as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Now, God divorced his bride. He, div he divorced Israel, I should say, the northern kingdom in the Old Testament. He divorced them. We read it. We read it in Jeremiah 3. He said, I gave them the bill of divorce and I divorced her. Right. Sent her out of my house. He divorced Israel. You mean to tell me when you get to the New Testament, God didn't just forgot, totally just forgot about Israel. And now he go, he bought the deal with some strangers. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. This is why it's a mystery, because many people don't see it. God reconciled to his wife. Uh, as I wrap this up, you'll see what I mean. So these Gentiles is Northern Kingdom Hebrews. Paul was sent to them specifically to the northern kingdom to preach Jesus Christ and salvation through him, okay, through his blood. He says, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Who's his flesh? He talking about Judah and Benjamin and, and some of Levi, okay, that was still in the Holy Land. Because Judah was puffed up. Big brother, Ephraim is the younger brother in Luke 15, and Judah is the big brother, okay? Judah was still in the house. The younger son went out and lived crazy, right? When young brother came back home and daddy was rejoicing, we got upset. We even got upset with, with daddy and was like, nah, you can't do this. This ain't right. That's not fair. That's not fair. And what did big brother do to, the, to, to daddy? We killed him. You understand? So... But the father in heaven had a plan, had a master plan. See, it was meant for Christ to die. Why? Because that's the only way that he could get remarried to his bride. Because later he would divorce us too, Judah. So then how can the Lord get remarried to us? Because if a man have a wife and he puts her away because he found uncleanness in her, he can't take her back. If he Once he divorces her, he can't take her back because that's an abomination. So God devised this master plan. To come in the flesh and die for his bride. Ephesians. Paul said, I speak concerning Christ in the church. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Died for his wife. Because the law never said if a man had a wife and she sinned against him, she committed adultery against him, he divorces her. 
it never said he can't take her back if he dies and comes back to life. And if she dies and comes back to life, that's the mystery of the Gentiles, brothers and sisters. But let me let me go on. Paul said, if by any means I may provoke to them to emulation, them which are my flesh and might save some of them for if the casting away of them, of the unbelieving Israelites from Judah, be the reconciling, the reconcile. Look that word up. Reconciling, reconciling of the world, the world as far as all the nations on earth. No, we're not talking about all of that because we know that the world can be reconciled through the blood of Jesus. You understand? That's not what this is about. This is talking about the world of Israel, all 12 tribes of our people. You understand? What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? We're going to read that in Ezekiel. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree, you, I think it's in Hosea. I could be wrong. The Lord calls Israel. All he calls all 12 tribes of our people, if I'm not mistaken, uh, an olive tree, a green olive tree. So Paul says, you being a wild olive tree, they, but they're still an olive tree. That lets you know he's talking about Israel. He's talking about the northern kingdom. God never called the strangers an olive tree. Never. Never. It says, work grafting among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Who's the real olive tree? Christ Jesus. You understand? Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. He's, so Paul was telling the northern kingdom Israelites that believed in Messiah and was, was turning and keeping God's commandments, getting baptized and all that, right? He was telling them, don't get puffed up against your own brothers. Don't get puffed up against the Israelites from Judah that don't believe in Messiah. Because you know how God divorced y'all and he didn't reconcile you through the blood of Jesus. So don't get puffed up against Judah because God can save them that don't believe too. Mystery of the Gentiles. Let's go further. Let's go to Colossians chapter one. Because the book of Romans is too deep to get into right now. Colossians one and... Look at, look at verse, let me see, um, cause all of this, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you this in the book of Acts, you can read about Paul, Barnabas, the apostles, their missionary work to the Northern kingdom Israelites and how Judah was persecuting them for going to the Northern kingdom Israelites because of the hatred is so bad with our people, even in that day. Okay. Now you read about the missionary work, right? When you get to Romans, you're reading about when you get to Romans and you read all the way through, you're reading about everything that already took place in the book of Acts. You're just reading about the letters that Paul wrote and certain events that took place that maybe you didn't see in the book of Acts. Okay. So Romans, Paul didn't go to some European Roman people. He didn't go to Kittim, okay? He went to the Northern Kingdom Israelites that was living in Rome, okay? That's why it don't make sense. If you look, if you read it and you're thinking about strangers, it doesn't really make sense, okay? Especially when you know the Old Testament scriptures. 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, that's a place in Greece, a city in Greece, okay? Paul did not go to Javan, who is the Greeks. He went to Israel that was in Greece, when you get to Galatians, Galatia is a place, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, is a place in Turkey. Why? Because Israel been scattered. Okay, our people is lost sheep. Now Judah is lost sheep. We scattered to the four corners. You understand? So Galatia is a place in Turkey. Colossi, Colossae is a place in Turkey. Um, uh, Thessalonica, if I remember correctly, is, I, I want to say it's a, it's a Greek city. But it might be in Turkey somewhere. OK, because the, the four uh, uh, European dynasties that have ruled are not. I won't say four because Medo-Persia is not European. They're, they are Semitic. OK, but Babylon, Greece and Rome, when they took over, they moved Israel all around. You understand? And, and this is before Judah went into worldwide slavery. OK, so this is why. Paul was going to Turkey and going to Greece and Rome. Why? Because Israel wasn't in just one central location. Remember, the book said 
that the king of Assyria, when he took them out of the land, he put strangers in, in Samaria, but then he took uh, Israel and put them in uh, uh, Hamath and Gozan and, you know, by the sea and all that. But when these other dynasties took over, they moved Israel too. You understand? Took them to different places. Okay. So look at Colossians 1. And so that's what I'm trying to tell you. All of that is written to Israel. It's written to the northern kingdom and Judah too. Okay. But it's written to the 12 tribes of Israel. All of this. The strangers can be a part of this. Please listen to me. They can be a part of this. But this is not about that. Don't don't twist God's word and make it to be, oh, well, you're saying that strangers can't be. Nobody's saying that. And if any brother there be that's on the streets or any brother in any camp that's teaching that the strangers can't be get, get saved, that they can't be a part of the kingdom of God. They are liars and the truth is not in them. If they're preaching that without repentance, if they're preaching that without humility, you understand? Because it's a difference between being in ignorance and then preaching something with boldness like, you know what you talk so Colossians one and let me show you, let me show you, um, let's, let's start at verse 19, Colossians one and 19. And it pleased the father that in him should all the fullness dwell talking about Christ Jesus, right? And having made peace through the blood of his cross, having made peace, peace between what? Peace between man and God, yes, but also peace between both kingdoms of Israel, north and south. He made peace by his blood because through his blood, we are forgiven for our sins. Through his blood, Christ can remarry his wife without committing adultery. Okay. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile, to reconcile, to reconcile. Look that word up. All things unto himself by him. I say whether they be things in the earth in earth or things in heaven and you he's talking to the northern kingdom Israelites in Colossae and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Remember when Jesus was reproving the Pharisees in them in Matthew 23. And he said, you, he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when you convert them, you make them twice the child of hell in yourselves. Okay. When you go to the book of Acts, every time Paul would go to this city or that city, it said, tell me if I'm lying, but it said Paul on the Sabbath day, Paul went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day in this city, in that city, in why? Because the Pharisees and them amongst Judah, they was they knew where the northern kingdom Israelites was at. And so they was going to where they was at and trying to convert them to their false doctrine. This is why Paul was Paul was raised up to bring the truth to them in these same locations. You understand? OK, let me let's skip down in chapter one. We're in Colossians one. Look at this verse verse uh, verse 25 whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you northern kingdom Israelites to fulfill the word of God to fulfill the word of God how can a man how can God have a bride who he was married to divorce her how can he take her back to be his wife without committing adultery that is the mystery but the mystery is revealed when you understand. Even it says to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You understand? This is the mystery of the Gentiles. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. We looked at who was the Gentiles that he went to the other nations. No, he went to the northern kingdom Israelites and was preaching repentance to them. 
to them. He said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Judah was still in the house. Judah was not lost for the most part. Judah was still in the house. They was lost through false doctrine, but they was not physically lost. Jesus said, if a man have 99, 100 sheep and one go astray, will he not leave the 99 and go get the one? That's what he did. Judah was the 99 and Ephraim is the one. Let's go to, we're almost done. Let's go to, let me see. Um, oh, that's what I want to show you. Let's go to first Peter. I think it's first Peter. Yeah. Let's go to first Peter. Remember those y'all that's been with me, uh, this whole broadcast. Remember we read in Hosea one, the Lord said to Hosea, name your son, this name, your daughter, that you tell, tell Israel, you're not going to be my people. I'm not going to be your God. Right. I'm not going to have mercy on you. Right. Even Peter, the, the holy apostle of the Lord Jesus wrote to the northern kingdom Israelites. You say how? Watch this. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. And we're going to pick it up at verse. We're going to pick it up at verse two. As newborn babes desire. Now, who is he talking to? I'm, you're going to find out. You're going to see as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God disallowed indeed of men. Men rejected Christ. The men of Israel rejected Christ and people in the world reject Christ now. But Israel is who he came to. He came to us first. Israel and Judah. Right. Many of our people rejected him. But chosen of God and precious. Yeah, also, I mean, ye also as lively stones. You also as lively stones. Since when was the strangers ever called the priesthood of God? I know that's not what it say, but watch this. Are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. And holy priesthood is the strangers referred to by the Most High, our God, as his priesthood? Or is not Exodus 19 clearly telling us that... The 12 tribes of Israel is God's priesthood on earth. Hmm. The strangers can be part of the commonwealth of Israel. But they are not the priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be, be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner let's let's skip down verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the, the praises of him who have called you out of darkness out of darkness remember isaiah the people that sat in darkness saw a great light. Come on, man. Come on. Pay attention. Who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time, this is how you know he talking to the northern kingdom, which in time past were not a people, not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The Lord tells Hosea. Call him, call, call his name ben -Ami, for I will not be your God and ye shall not be my people. Name your daughter this because I will have no more mercy on, on Israel. Peter said, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Northern kingdom. This is the mystery. <sighs> Even first John, I'm telling you, the whole thing is about us. It's so deep. First John, John is telling us, he talking to uh, Israel and Judah, but he's specifically talking to Israel, the northern kingdom. Okay, let's 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 wrap this up. We're almost done. Let's go to let me see. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37. And let me see. Do I want to make this the the end? Nah, we'll read Jeremiah 31 and then we'll be done. Let's look at this. Ezekiel 37. Most of y'all familiar to the valley of the dry bones, right? The part that you may not be familiar with. Let's pick it up at verse 15. 
The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Who's the, who's the children of Israel, his companions? Benjamin and Levi. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. The northern kingdom, right? Take one stick for the southern kingdom, one stick for the northern kingdom, right? And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations. Let me read it again. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them all and they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Hmm. Hmm. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. Why? Because the Lord divorced Judah, too. He divorced us, too. This is the this is the need for the remarriage between the bridegroom and his bride. See the, the parable about the ten virgins. See, you thought that was talking about just anybody. No, Jesus is always talking about us. He said he's afflicted with all our afflictions. You understand? He said, he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. We are the most important thing to God. I'm telling you the truth. He loved us. He told Jeremiah, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Talking about the 12 tribes of our people, brothers and sisters, you need to understand this. When Jesus talked about a new commandment I give unto you, love one another like I've loved you. See, you, th you think when you close your eyes, you picturing white people. Jesus is not talking about that. He's telling us as Israel, all 12 tribes of our people, whoever believes in Messiah amongst our people, he's telling us. Stop hating each other. Love one another. I know the divine curses is on you. I know. I know it's hard when you're walking down the street and you see your brother doing evil and you, you just want to have an attitude with him. But love your people. I ain't saying tolerate the sin. I'm saying we got to love our people. Have you ever wondered why we feel as a people, we feel more comfortable robbing one another, but you don't hear about Israel going and robbing the white people. You don't hear about Israel robbing the the uh, the strength. None of the strangers, really. Why do we do evil to our own people and be nice to the strangers? Because this would let you know this. This Bible is not saying what you think it's saying. I ain't saying that those brothers and sisters is right. I'm saying we have a, a problem on our hands where we don't we lack love for each other because the curse came upon our people and we are no more one family. We are no more one son. To God, we are two sons. We are two kingdoms, two nations. This is why Peter told Cornelius, the Israelite from the northern kingdom. You know, it's an unlawful thing for a man that's that's from Judah to to deal with somebody from another nation. He wasn't talking about just strangers. He was talking about from Israel. It didn't matter if you was from Gad, from Asher, from Zebulon, from Naphtali, from Dan. OK, it didn't matter. He was saying, look, you know, we won't even deal with y'all like that. And y'all don't deal with us. East Coast, West Coast, Biggie and Tupac sound familiar. That's what it is. Mm -mm -mm. But you'll still have some people and say, nope, I don't believe it. OK, I ain't trying to convince you. I just came on here to share this with you. 
Let me see, do I want to look at anything else in the New Testament before we finish this? Um, well, I'm, I'm going to explain. Um, we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 24 and then... Um, Let me see. Do I want to look at anything else? Um, let me see. Okay, let's go. Let's go to Jeremiah 31 real quick. I'll just do my best to explain it to you. Explain the latter part. Jeremiah 31. Okay, we'll start at 27. This is why I said earlier in the lesson that we are not fully in the new covenant yet. We're transitioning into it because all have not come to pass yet. OK. If you don't understand, put it on the coffee table. Come back to it later. Jeremiah 31, 27. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow that I will sow, meaning stitch together. Ezekiel 37. Right. I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast, meaning perfect peace and harmony throughout all the earth. When we go home, Israel and Judah, it's going to be peace in the whole world for a thousand years straight. Not before. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict. So will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. In those days, they shall say no more that the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in, the, in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. You understand? Now that's for Israel and Judah, right? Now, let me see. Let's let's look at one more place in the testimony and then we'll come back to Deuteronomy 24 and then that will be it. Um, let me show you. Uh, try to think of a really good verse. Um, dang, it's so many. Um. Okay, I'll, I'll just say it just for the sake of time. Remember Matthew 24? Jesus talked about the end and he said, look, I'm going to come. I'm going to send my angels to gather my elect from the four corners of the earth, right? That's all 12 tribes of Israel. Ezekiel 20, read that on your own time. Ezekiel 20 tells you, well, the first part of it tells you about how God was dealing with Israel. And um, I can't remember if he was talking about Judah too, but... Uh, once you get towards the end or the middle part of chapter 20, he starts talking about the regathering. And he says, look, we're going to go to the wilderness. We're going to get basically we're going to get remarried in the wilderness. Right. And he says, and all of them that transgress against me, I'm going to kill them in the woods. You know, you ain't coming into my holy land. Right now. Why that's important. Let's go to the last place. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 24 and then this will be it. And I thank you. For those of y'all that stuck stuck around this whole broadcast and listen to this. And those of you that just coming in that may not understand where we're at, rewatch the video when it's when it's uploaded, okay? Um, if you're curious about this, if you want to understand. Deuteronomy 24 and verse 1. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house and when she is departed out of his house she may go and be another man's wife and if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house or if the latter husband die which took her to be his wife her former husband which sent her away may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled for that is abomination before the lord and thou shalt not cause the land to sin which the lord thy god giveth thee for an inheritance right now, the Lord, 
I want to say the Lord just put this on my mind, but maybe I just thought about it. I want to show you one more place in the New Testament. Let's go to the book of Romans real quick. And then then I'll do some a little bit of explaining and then that'll be it. Let's go to Romans uh, chapter seven, Romans chapter seven and verse one. Romans chapter seven and verse one. Donita, you're most welcome. All praises to the Most High. Most High. <clears throat> Romans chapter 7, verse 1. It says, Know ye not, brethren. Paul is talking to the northern kingdom Israelites living in Rome. Okay? He's not talking to Europeans. This does not mean strangers cannot get salvation. I'm just breaking it down, rightly dividing the word of truth, trying to show you the mystery of the Gentiles. It's not what you think it is. Okay? Know ye not, brethren, Paul is talking to Israel, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman, I'm going to show you one more place, matter of fact, because it just came to mind again, or this other part. For the woman, which hath an husband, is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. Hmm. You're going to find out. But if the husband be dead... She is loosed from the law of her husband. Now you can understand Paul was, he was deeper than what you think he was. Okay. It says she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. You may be saying, well, what does that have to do with Messiah? Let me show you. Let's go to Ephesians. And then that'll be it. I love God's word, man. I love the most high. Praise him for real, man. Praise him, man. We don't even deserve this second chance to get salvation. We deserve the lake of fire, man. But it's because of his love and his mercy, his compassion on his people, Israel. That's how the whole world can get saved. It's through us. But because he loved us so much, he set this whole plan in motion, man. You understand redemption through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One of Israel, the King of Israel. So I just thank the Most High, man, for giving us understanding, for teaching us to carry our cross, deny yourself, follow the Messiah's footsteps. You understand? Love the Lord with every part of your being and love your neighbor as yourself. Israel, Israel need to love your neighbor as yourself. Even that, we we twist that and make that about the strangers. Just love everybody. We don't have a problem loving other people. That's why we run around here chasing the strangers, Israel. Love your own. Just because you love your own don't mean you hate other people. You understand? That's that emotional witchcraft people try to put on you, man. Oh, you saying that we should we should only love Israel. Ain't nobody saying that. I'm telling you, love your people more than you love the other people, man. What's wrong with that? Okay, look at this. Ephesians, I'm, well, I just, okay, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 2 and verse 11, and then I'm going I'm to hit my, my main point, and then that'll be it. Okay, Ephesians 2 and verse 11, wherefore, remember, Paul is talking to some northern kingdom Israelites that's living in Ephesus, a place in Turkey modern day Turkey. Okay. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, Gentiles in the flesh. Well, brother Paul, that, that sounds like these people was strangers. No, sir. It, this just came to mind. Let's go real quick, real quick. Let's, let's go to, I think it's first Corinthians 10. Yeah. Let's look at this. Look at this. You come, come take a look at this. First Corinthians chapter 10. Right. Let's look at this. Verse one. It says, moreover, brethren, Paul talking to some Israelites, moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Right. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did eat, did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual rock for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Right. Okay. No, no, no. Come, come take a look at this. One moment. What time is it? 9.20. Okay. 
Look at this. First Corinthians. Let me see. Um, okay. Where is that at? Uh, heck. Where is that? Cause he he talk about uh oh it's deep. Where is that? I thought it was in that chapter. Uh, let me see. One moment, brothers and sisters. One moment. It was just on the tip of my tongue, too. Um, he talk about, uh, he talk about y'all being, um, Gentiles. And I like how he said it. Maybe it's in Second Corinthians somewhere. Let me find it real quick, real quick, real quick. Um, where is that Lord? Um, please bear with me while I find this real quick. Because uh, it's important because it fits in what I'm, what I'm trying to show you. Dang, it was on the tip of my tongue too. That's crazy. Um, okay, back to uh, Ephesians 2 and 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, right? So Judah was calling, we read that in John seven thirty five. Judah was calling the northern kingdom Gentiles, but they didn't just make that up on their own. God referred to the northern kingdom as Gentiles. We read Isaiah, right? God called them Gentiles. Even in that same book of Isaiah, God told Isaiah to tell Ahaz, uh, king of Judah, within 65 years from now, Ephraim going to be broken and they not even going to be a people. You read through the book of Hosea, the Lord is talking about how Israel is not his people. He's not their God. And this ties in once you get to the New Testament, it all starts clicking. It all starts making sense. Right. So these Gentiles was not strangers. These was northern kingdom Israelites. And they were called uncircumcised by Judah, who was called the circumcision because Judah was still in the house of dad, of our father. Judah was still, for the most part, keeping the commandments for the I said for the most part. OK, verse 12, that at the time ye were without Christ, that at that time ye were without Christ, without Christ, without Christ. That is key. You got to understand that. Without Christ being aliens or being strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. This is a wild olive tree, but they're still an olive tree. They're, they were divorced from God, but they still God's people. Because God, it, he, Paul said, have God cast away his people? God forbid. You understand? Y'all not cut off completely. He divorced you for a season. But he found a way to remarry you or I shouldn't say he found a way. He had a way to remarry you and remarry us, even those of us from the kingdom of Judah, because we are divorced, too, at this point. And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, the strangers can't testify to this because the strangers, all they ever had to do was come find him. That's an Israelite who knew the word, who knew the word, who knew the most high and say, I want to serve your God like Rahab did. And she was welcomed with open arms. You understand? But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, north and south kingdoms of Israel. 
Jesus have reconciled both kingdoms of Israel through his blood, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, the sacrificial law, for the making himself of twain, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to them that were not. Who was, who was near? Judah. Who was far off? Israel. For through him we both, North, northern kingdom and southern kingdom of Israel, Judah, Israel and Judah, for through Christ, we both have access by one spirit unto the father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Who's the saints? Read Psalm 116. It's the 12 tribes of Israel. But since the kingdom got split, the only saints that was left was Judah, because Judah was still in the house temporarily. Keeping God's commandments, right? Temporarily. And of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the spirit. Paul, he was he was too deep for you to pretend like, you know, exactly what he's talking about until you understand this. But we went over this evening. You're not going to understand what Paul is talking about. You're going to think Paul went to some strangers, some actual strangers. Who is not Israelites? No, sir. Paul went to the northern kingdom Israelites and preached salvation to them. Preached re repentance and faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your past sins, baptism, circumcision, all of that. He did do all of that. He preached that. So did the other holy apostles. When Christ said, I'm, oh man, I told you we may not get through everything, but I'm, I want to show you one, one last thing. Let me go to Ephesians real quick about the, the, the husbands and wives, right? And how this ties into Jesus and Israel and Judah, okay? Uh, look at this. Ephesians 5 and verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Who's the church? The 12 tribes of Israel, right? And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Jesus died for the 12 tribes of Israel. The blessing goes to anybody in the world who wants to receive Christ and hope for salvation. Anybody can get saved. Okay, it don't matter what nationality you are. But God sent his son to do it specifically for his own wife, us. Okay. John 3, 16, it, I know, I know that we make that about the whole world. And it is, it is, but not first and foremost. First and foremost, it was for us. You read Acts 5, 31. It's for us that he did this. You understand? Jesus came not to die. Uh, um, he didn't go to all the world to say, look, I'm going to die for y'all. It, it was meant for the whole world, brothers and sisters. Please understand what I'm saying. But he did it for us. Okay. He did it for us that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be uh, holy and without blemish. OK, now. What I want to what I want to explain to you is. How can I say it? Um, how can I say it? What we need to understand is. <sighs> Dang, how do I want to say it, man? Um, look. Okay, I'll, I'll just say it this way. We done. We done, y'all. This this what I'll say. If a man have a wife, he finds uncleanness in her, he divorces her. He cannot take her back to be his wife, right? Paul said, but if that man, if he dies, that woman, if she gets remarried, she won't be called an adulterous woman, right? This is the deepness of the mystery of the Gentiles. God divorced the northern kingdom. Right. And then he divorced Judah much later. 
So just say this, he divorced his wife, right? Because he found uncleanness in her, right? She committed adultery. When they got married, he was God and we were flesh. He came in the flesh and died for his wife. The law never said anything about if a man who have a wife and he dies for her and comes back to life, he can't remarry her. It said while the man is alive, if she gets remarried, she can't come back to him. Right. Jesus came and died for his wife, was raised back to life. Now, once he was resurrected, he promised his wife, we're going to get remarried. But by the time we get remarried, you're going to become a new woman, too. Because I cannot, re I can't remarry you while you still flesh. Because I'm God, so I'm back to being God. So now you're gonna become my goddess, if I can say that without y'all getting offended. You're gonna become my goddess. You're gonna become an immortal, just like I'm an immortal, and we're gonna be happily ever after. That's the deepness of this. So this is why the first resurrection going to take place. Do you understand now? On another level. See, so anyway, I know this has been a long, long little video. Um, I thank y'all for allowing me to um, the time to go over this with you. I pray that you got some understanding. There's much, much more. I just, you know, hit a little bit. Um, so I pray that the most high give you eyes to see and ears to hear if you choose to humble yourself. If not, you know, it's no use in you trying to argue with me and, and you know, say how wrong I am. If these scriptures don't make sense to you now, that's just because you don't want it to. OK, but my love be with you all in Jesus Christ. Grace, peace and mercy to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered worldwide and the strangers that are with us. Shalom.